so here we are in Leonardo AI so we're gonna go to image creation and type in our prompt so we're gonna use the cinematic kino model it's gonna change the contrast into high quality generation mode 16 by 9 and once I'm done with that these are kind of the images I got from Leonardo as you can see some of the images are a little bit weird because we have the tattoo on the face of this dwarf character but that's nothing to worry about we can fix it in the next tool which is free pick so here in free pick we're going to go to image generation and we're going to use the retouch feature here on free pick we're going to upload our image so i'm going to use this as an example and simply we're just going to brush off the area where those tattoos are I would have to keep them but it's just an area of character consistency we can't really get the character to be consistent if we have all the different tattoos on the character's face but anyways within just a few seconds free pick will give us a few images to choose from and I simply just choose which one is most appropriate for this character and click on apply and then we can download these images so I did that for all of those images that I generated on Leonardo and basically clean the image up and have him in different expressions so that I have a data set to go and train my LoRa model so here I'm on replicate and we're going to look for this flux Dev LoRa trainer and we're going to use this to train our LoRa with the images that we clean up so you can just create a new model give it a name you can have it private or public you just want to give it a name that's a little bit unique maybe with some numbers or something like that so that um you know there's some unique string that's associated to your LoRa model and then we're going to input all the images that we have cleaned up from Leonardo and then we're going to give it a trigger word so each time you call on this trigger word right the image will generate with that train character that you have and for the rest of the setting we're just going to kind of leave it as it is not gonna mess around with this part so much and once you're done and ready you can just click on create and it will take about 20 to 30 minutes to when create your model so here we're back on Leonardo AI and I'm using the flow state here and I love to use the flow state to kind of like give me an idea of what kind of post what kind of content I want um, so that I can use that particular image later as a post reference and content reference to create the final image so here I have a prom of the dwarf warrior in action and I'm going to use some of these styles i'll probably use volumetric for this one epic and i like the deep teal keep it to 16 by 9 and we're going to generate the dwarf warrior in battle with battle armor on a cold winter day and it quickly gives me some images and i can just quickly look through it browse through it and kind of direct it to the type of image that i want and you can do it up to a maximum of three times so i really find this tool in leonardo to be very very useful so that i can find the type of shot that i want i don't really have to describe it i'm gonna let the image do the work and most of the time for now it's like a concept art where you know you kind of have a sketch of or a concept art of what you like it to be so i took one of these as an example and we're going to type in the prompt again so dwarf warrior standing in front of our entity of his army on a cold winter day and what we're going to do is we're going to choose our character reference so i have my character reference of that character then it's not going to work very well because it's not exactly a close-up shot and this can only work if you're using the cinematic kino preset or cinematic kino model 
I'm going to upload that image that we had just now from our flow state as a content reference as well as a post to image. Then what we can do is you can play around with the strength and we'll click on generate. So what should happen is that the image that we generated in flow state will kind of feel like what we generated here with a new image with the cinematic Kino model. Now, as you can see, the image of the character is not exactly the same as the character I have. So we're going to do some changes here. So we're going to go to photopay, photopay.com. And we're going to open that image up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out the face. So I'll just create a new layer. And basically, I'm just going to control backspace and paint this whole layer black. Reduce the opacity just a little bit. And I'm going to change it to white with a brush tool. And simply, I'm just going to brush off the area of where this character's face is together with the ponytail and the beard or whichever area is affected. So what we're going to do later on is we're going to bring this back to our train model and basically ask it to, in simpler terms, swap out the face of this character with the train LoRa model that we have done earlier. So once we are done masking that area out, just don't forget to bring this back to 100%. So we got the black and white areas and we're going to export this as a JPEG file. So we're going to save it somewhere and then we're going to go back to our dashboard here in Replicate and we're going to look for the model. So I have my train model from earlier. So I'm going to click on that. And here, basically, you can put a prompt later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that image that I had done inside Leonardo with the wrong face, which the face is not of my character. I'm going to put the mask file that we have just done earlier on photo P. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to give it a prompt. Right, so the prompt will have to include my trigger word. In this case, is D-W-E-L-C-H-A-R. And I'm going to say it's standing in a battle pose getting ready for battle right and you might need to try this a few times to kind of like get the best result change the prompt a little bit here and there i'm going to change it to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and also going to change the output to be a jpeg format so after we hit on run we just have to wait for it to do its thing it doesn't take that long about 30 seconds Less than a minute. So once it's done, it will give you the character. So you might need to change it a few times. So I, I didn't get the, the right one the first try. So I, I kind of like changed the prompt to be like silky red hair. And once you're happy with that image, you can then bring it to upscale media. If let's say you don't have enough credits on Leonardo or something like that. And you can go ahead and upscale it with the enhanced quality on. And I'm going to download the image to use it inside Clink. But before that, I'm just going to show you real quick how you can make some edits in FreePix. So I have this image with the monster that kind of looks like my character. So I just basically highlighted that area and swap it out with a monster that I like. And then I added a weapon here. He didn't have a weapon before. And then I needed another shot where I didn't want to have the dwarf there. So I need to do it a couple of times to finally get that character out so that I can have two shots to look at this. So how we managed to do that is to basically take those images and put it inside Kling AI with their new 1.6 model. So here just to show you a few examples of the prompts I have, usually I'll use about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 in the creativity relevant setting. Obviously, we're going to use professional mode and it depends on how long your shot is, either 5 seconds or 10 seconds. We can really play with the camera movement right now in the 1.6 model, but that's all right. We're going to get fairly decent results. But something to just take note is that I tried to do some battle fighting kind of scenes, which I believe is not ready yet for AI. So it's kind of hit and miss for me, um, especially while I was trying to get the two of two kind of like fight characters. So these are some of the things you don't exactly see in the short film. 
um, was contemplating whether I should put it in or not, but in the end, I decided to take it out. But these shots were inside the scene, and basically, we don't want to write something that's overly complicated, something that is kind of straightforward because I think the prompt adherence in Kling is very good. So in this case, monster emerging or dwarf warrior running shortly and keeps running towards a monster in a high attack. Um, it, I needed kind of like a couple shots to finally get the right shot that I want or, or the right video that I wanted. Uh, basically playing around with, with the prompts. There are a few other things that um, just to take note of, um, you know, if we describe, for example, where the character is running, in this case, Dwarf Warrior is running towards the battle scene from the right side of the screen to the snowy terrain, so, or towards the right side of the screen from the snowy terrain, so it, it gives it a little bit more direction, um, as well as sometimes what I do is that I have the same image and I give it different prompts to kind of like create the shot, one of him looking at the orc my medium one running away, here, just to show you that um, certain battle scenes just really weird and doesn't really work out, which I believe soon enough is going to get better if you're going to do those epic battle scenes. So yeah, basically Kling has one of the better models out there for image to video. One other thing is to take note of is the camera movement. So in this case, you have the camera fly above to a bird's eye view of the orc army. And I find these prompts very useful. Here's a, another one where the camera flies above to a bird's eye view of the dwarf army. And after a few prompts, I managed to get the right shot I wanted. So having the or describing the right type of camera movement is really useful as well. So here's just to show you a few other shots that I have done. Inside Kling is all part of the film that you might have already seen. If not, please look at the comments below to have a look at the short film that I did using this technique. So there are certain specific shots like smoky breath coming out from his mouth to kind of like get that frost, you know, because it's like in a cold environment. So again, I believe that if we kind of like type in with some details, the prom adherence here in cycling is very good. The southern settlements, my lord, lie in ruin. So then I went to runway to use the so egg the one feature. omens have come to pass. Never did I believe it will come during my lifetime. So the cool thing about runway is that you can upload your performance and use a video which I created in Kling to be the reference video. So you can just upload your performance over here and then basically upload your video that you did inside Kling to create this kind of acting performance. And basically, we use the Gen 3 Alpha mode and then later on, I went to upres it to HD. Picture, if you will, a rough and tumble kind of guy that's in it for the gusto. So that was the voice I used for the short film and basically we went to 11 Labs to use their voice changer function. And also, I went to the sound effect function here to create some of the sound effects that you hear in the short film. And we can change the settings as well inside 11 Labs to how many seconds you want for the different sound effects. And lastly, I went to Suno AI to create the background music and the song that you heard towards the end at the credit section. So, I really love Suno AI. can put in your lyrics or you can have a more of an instrumental sound if you want. So I created this song. So I'm really happy to share my technique and my approach on how I made that short film and I really hope that you learn a few things or so and hopefully we can learn from each other. If you have any other videos, please just comment it video below here in the comments so that we can all learn how to create short films using AI if you have any specific techniques you want to share. But this is my workflow and perhaps you could adopt it. 
and i hope you enjoy this video tutorial till next time goodbye